Welcome to DMV Experience. This is Princess, and I am so excited you decided to join us today. We have a session from the summit with missionary Thierry McFarlane with Mount Peniel Church of God in Christ. She is also the founder of True Vine, and you want to hear what she has to say about your health, not only the spiritual health, but also your physical health. So stay and watch this. Farther from the front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
But if you have a, um, like a chair like this, they have levels on them. Put them on the lower setting. Hurt my knees. That means I'm going to be squatting. Guess what? You're burning more energy when you have to get out the chair. Ooh. Yeah. Quick things that will help you that we don't even think of because we don't take the time or the effort or just don't understand. Mm -hmm. Quick things that we do. So exercise is important. All right? Careers. If you are stuck in a career that you don't love, it will mess up the body. Mm -hmm. Job is just something to do, just something to do, but the career is long, life, long lasting, long, um, whatever you're going to do throughout life, something that you're going to continue to do, and never do that that you don't love. If you're stuck in something that you don't love, it messes the rest of the parts of man also. Mm -hmm. So, um, when we grow up, our parents say, what about getting the best career? What did they say? You go to school, make sure you get the best, maybe all of our parents are saying, but some of you, get the best paying job that you can get. Oh. <laughs> and if it's not our parents, some teachers say that. And if it's not our teachers, other people say, get the best paying job that you can get. Because you want to be able to supply your family and give your family what it needs so you don't have to grow up, I mean, for your kids don't have to grow up struggling like you'd have to and all the other stuff. If it's something that you don't love, it doesn't matter because you're going to poison everything else. Amen. So the career is important, an important choice. Teaching. Great. The one something that you love. Great. I love my job. I um, am a nurse at a cardiology office. So I help people heal themselves. God does the healing, but understanding what purpose we can do to make our bodies correct that he has given us. We're all made in God's image, and then we destroy the temple that he gives us. Wow. Which is scary. Which I'm going to get into more in a minute. The exercise and career always go into fast, or go through fast. Relationships. The bond of the mother is the first relationship. It's that connection that we get from the womb when we hear, even though we probably don't realize it now, but we hear the mother's womb. We had There's studies that show that babies, when they come out, they're comforted by their mother's voice mm -hmm. because that's all they heard wow. all those many months. <laughs> they're comforted by that sound that connection starts to develop, whether they realize it or not. And so when we're kids, we rely on our parents to do certain things for us because that's what they do, right? And if they don't, other people start to step in to fulfill those needs. So relationships, we start off learning the correct, correct way to be in a relationship. Loving, kind, peace, but also, what comes with parenting sometimes? Chastisement yeah. and discipline. It's all to help who? The parent? <laughs> to help us, the children growing up. Right? Any questions so far? Relationships affect the body. I'm going more alone with that. Going to the next part, spiritual. The soul is an important Heart for the believer. That is what goes to heaven or hell. Your soul has your personality, your um, emotions, and then from your mind goes your thoughts and everything. So when we start to feed ourselves, not physically, but spiritually into our soul, certain things that we feed will come out to this body. So if I'm feeling sad or depressed, what is the first thing I'm going to be grabbing? I'm going back to my big tub of food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Chocolate ice cream. Yes. 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 Smothered in, this is me, and peanut butter. Mm -hmm. I love peanut butter. <laughs> and people tend to do that. We eat to cover a multitude of things because of something that's wrong in us. 
something that's missing in us that we don't understand because somewhere along the line someone said certain things someone treated us certain ways and these are all important things of fixing the body all right now i was thinking of a story in the bible and the lord brought me to job what struck me god said go to chapter one and i went to chapter one and i went to the very first verse and it god the scripture was explaining who Job was. And in it, it says that he was perfect and upright. That's how they describe Job. Perfect and upright. What? We can be perfect? <laughs> the Bible says perfect and upright. Job was perfect and and upright. Everything that was about him and his lifestyle and the way he carried himself was perfect and upright. A little, a couple verses down, I think it started in verse 5. Um, the Lord, there's some, the sons of God, it says, went before the Lord and with them was Satan. And Satan was there and God says, what are you doing here? He said, well, I was walking back and forth, up and down, to and fro, nothing to do. And God said, have you considered my uh, servant Job? And though his latter story, part of the story is great, I wanted to stay at that part. Satan knew exactly who Job was, and God didn't have to tell him he was perfect and upright. Satan said to the Lord, well, let me tell you about this man who you have the hedge of protection over. You, I can't do nothing to him because you're protecting him. God didn't say that. Satan recognized him. Amen. So Job in his upright and perfect state, Satan couldn't touch him. So God says, okay, um, go ahead. Just don't touch his body, but you can try everything else. And Satan says, Watch. He's going to curse you. You're going to tell God, who knows everything and beyond more, even in ourselves, I can't do this now. I can't get up and exercise in the morning. I can't. I can't eat the right things. I can't. I don't have time for that. Who can see beyond this point? So, Satan went and he did some things. Killed his family members all, destroyed property, destroyed all these things. And just like this, to our own selves, our own bodies, what happens with our souls that are protected by our bodies, we start hearing that we're not good enough. We are ugly. And then we start to take on that attribute ourselves. So they say it's a man's world? I don't see anybody's name on it. While they were doing their thing, we slowly changed our lives. Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. I seen something, it was a, a little, it wasn't a big research study, just something that they um, did I seen on Facebook about girls and women. And um, the girls, they just took pictures or videos of the girls in their own element in the mirror saying, yeah, I'm pretty. Oh, and dressing up and you can see the happiness of them in the mirror. They did the same thing to women, older women, teenager women. And they said, look in the mirror and see what you see. Some of them were shy, turned around. Some of them wouldn't even look in the mirror. Some of them were, well, I see I have this extra wrinkle right here. Some, the first thing they saw was imperfection. And that is exactly what Satan wants us to see, that we're imperfected. And God says we're perfect. He says we're imperfect. That's what an emulator does. Not imitate, but emulator tries to act like 
they are who they say they are, or more than what they say they are, and they're not. So that it switches that. So now I, I'm ugly because now I think I'm ugly. So I'm going to treat this body in ugliness and not care. And I will do anything I want to to this body. I now become numb. My soul is empty and I'm numb on the outside. How do I fix that? How do I fix it? God is the only person that can fix this inside. And I'm, all this I'm saying was my testimony. Empty inside. That's how I felt. Empty inside. No, not everybody was telling me that I was ugly, even though a lot of people did. A lot of people said certain things about me too. But I took on the things that people said, and I thought I was that. And so the Lord said, but perfect you are. So how do I fix to make myself perfect? Well, look, perfect you are. Oh, renewing of your mind. I'm perfect. So what do I do? I start perfecting things, not things that are of my ability, but God gave me wisdom. Um, uh, four years ago, I was 280 pounds and some change and some more change. And I didn't really care for myself. So the Lord said, let me show you what to do. And he gave me this strategic plan and everything that he said, no pills, no surgery, everything he said caused a change to happen from the inside. Primary foods, the reason why I preach that so much to make sure that this right is right, because it doesn't matter what I ate, I had to fix the inside first. So I can be skinny and my inside is messed up, my outside is still unhealthy. I can be really big, my inside is messed up, so my outside is unhealthy. So I talk to different groups of people all the time who says, yeah, I'm healthy all the time. I mean, I'm healthy because I, I weigh like 120 pounds, that's good. Let me tell you what your body percentage is of fat. It's like 30. What? How is that? You're still unhealthy. You have more fat than you do muscle even though you're tiny. But it starts from the inside. And the reason why we have three parts is because all three parts are supposed to work together to fix all of us, to make the whole body whole. The spirit can't be by itself. The soul can't be by itself. And the body cannot be by itself. The body needs life, the spirit. The soul it's something to house them while we're on this earth. First things first, primary foods, things that you don't fix in place. So I'm at a job that I don't like, a job that I don't like. I fix it. I go to where my purpose is, what God has called me to. I'm in a relationship that I'm stuck in that is poisoning me. I fix it. I get out of that relationship. I exercise more. But the relationship that we really should focus on, the number one relationship, Christ. Amen. Jesus into our hearts is the first relationship, and then everything else will start to work itself out. I've seen, um, I love, I, I research a lot, <laughs> and I've seen this little tidbit about um, women being blessings. And we are the blessing to men. Sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we forget that we are gifts. Not only are gifts in us, but we are a gift. And we forget that. In the beginning, God created man. Adam, right? Right? And then he created who? Eve. He said that we should not be alone. Man should not be alone. 
and I'm not talking about boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, all that stuff, but just not alone. We, us, together, we're not alone in this place. Mm -hmm. Keeping each other in contact, we're not alone in this place. But he gave Eve to Adam as a gift. And so even if we're not pursuing uh, a boyfriend at the time, guess who we are pursuing? Christ. Christ. And we are his brides, mm -hmm. and he is our bridegroom, so we're going to present ourselves as the gift. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure the gift is wrapped correctly. Mm -hmm. The inside, if I have a box that has this pretty bow, I'm going to use this because all of you guys know the little blue box. Mm -hmm. Little Tiffany's box with a little white bow, and I open it up, and there is a spider in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's nothing. Nobody cares about the box because that, I'm not going to touch the box because there's literally a spider in it. I don't like bugs, so mm -hmm. I'm running away. Or you have a trash can, and because nobody likes trash, right? You know what? I mean, you guys like digging in trash? Mm -hmm. I, I don't. And so you have this trash can, and inside it, it really doesn't smell bad, and it really looks good, but you can't get past the trash on the outside. Mm -hmm. Though inside, I may seem, I, I really am a sweet person, but I have built up all this on the outside because you're not getting past that point. It's trashy. We have to be gifted, wrapped up, beautified in ourselves, and it has nothing to do with weight. People always say, I want to lose weight faster than come to me. I want to lose weight faster. It has nothing to do with weight. Did you just get that out of your mind? It's good to lose weight and to be at a healthy set, but it doesn't matter. It's about healthy, living healthy. Healthy means a perfect balance. Mm -hmm. A perfect balance between everything. So our perfection is in Christ. We are only perfect because we are in Christ. And so we have that balance with Christ. That's what it means to be healthy. And so God gives us wisdom. Do not go and get a fried pork chop and put it on mashed potatoes. And then have your greens. Oh, you got your vegetables. You got your vegetables. You have your greens and then corn, and then put gravy all on top of it, <laughs> on everything. Oh, I felt something on that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I've I seen some drool coming from some people. <laughs> That's not <laughs> wisdom. And then, and then, and then we do this. <sighs> Dear Heavenly Father, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for this food. <laughs> Thank you for uh, making it nourishment to our lives. Wait, and take out every harmful <laughs> What? Does that make sense? Is that wise? Yeah, is that yeah. wisdom? <laughs> it tastes good. Yeah, is <laughs> but is it wisdom? Yeah. Wow. So you expect God to do all this, mm -hmm. and, and, and then wait, wait. Now you come see me. I said I'm with cardiology. We work on people who have heart attacks. And you come see me you have a heart attack. Oh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know what happened and all this. And now I'm living this life and um, I want God just to heal me. But he told you a few of those plates ago. <laughs> We want God, we want to know God is a healer. Mm -hmm. That's fine. He wants to know God is a healer. That's fine. He can heal a headache. He can heal a broken toe. He can heal sight. He can heal different things that we really can't control. But everything that we control, every preventable thing that we can have control over, like things that we put in our mouth, use wisdom. Man's wisdom is foolishness compared to Godly wisdom. So instead of saying, I, I even had to change up my prayer too because I was like, what nourishment to my body? <laughs> this is not nourishment, even though I mean my body well nourished. But 
This is not nourishment. And then take out every harmful impurity. God, I'm not even going to put the impure things on my plate. Mm -hmm. wow. Amen. I switched my mindset, changing lifestyles. So there's so many quick fixes out there. But with God, we understand there's no quick fix. He makes things pure as soon as he comes in. He gives us wisdom. So um, I have a lot of patients that say, well, this, this is just not a lot of weight coming out. It took you 50 years to get there. Ooh. I'm done. It's not going to come off in two days. And if you do something that comes off that quickly, it's going to be even worse for you in the long run. That's, it's not good. Lifestyle change. You have to make that lifestyle change. Starting from the inside, the mind, saying, enough is enough. I'm going to exercise more. I'm not going to eat that extra triple chocolate cheesecake. I'm, I'm not going to eat it. That's <laughs> an extra. That's an extra. Extra. <laughs> I'm not going to eat it. That extra one, because I my mindset is in the change, starting from the inside. Make sense? Exercise more. Live healthy. Read better. Know God as a healer but use wisdom in the things that you do. Think twice about what you put on your plate. I'm not saying that you gotta go eat grass, because that's what a lot of people say I eat now. I eat more than grass. Here we go, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's more than just that. It's taking the time out to research and develop something that's going to benefit this body, which was bought, which was bought with a price through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to keep this precious and perfect in him by using his wisdom. Amen.